What's up guys, it's me Jeremy. You know, Hearthstone is constantly changing, and although the standard rotation kinda keeps the game unique and interesting in its own way, it really can make it tough for newer players to enter, or for casual players to keep up on decks. And it's certainly true that some high tier decks, well, they can cost a lot of dust, and that it can take a really long time for newer players to build up their collection, but that doesn't mean that you can't be competitive on a budget. So today we're taking a look at some few super top tier decks that are also relatively inexpensive, and we've got quite a few options, so hopefully there's something for everyone. And if you enjoyed the video, definitely hit that like button and let's get started. So for our first deck, we're taking a look at Discard Zulog. So here's the most competitive list by the Hearthstone Pro Zixo. So this particular version only has a dust cost of 880, although it does require all three adventures actually. However, if we're playing this deck on a budget, the only adventure you really need to have is One Night in Karazhan, since it gives you access to both Silverware Golem and Malchazar's Imp, which are a crucial part of the deck since they make your discards generally positive overall. While Dark Peddler and Imp Gang Boss are definitely great cards and belong in the optimal, the most competitive version of the Zoo list, they can definitely be replaced with budget alternatives like Knife Juggler, Darkshire Councilman, Shattered Sun Cleric, and many other cards as well, leaving you with a deck that you can build with just one adventure and under a thousand dust. Now you have to consider whether or not Zoo's the deck for you. Zoo, and Discard Zoo in particular, is a deck that's kind of all about sequencing and board positioning. You know, it's a great option to play if you like getting small advantages over other players through like micro decisions and interactions and stuff like that. As well, if you enjoy fighting for board control and minion-based interactions in general, you know, people who typically like playing Arena, you're probably gonna like playing Zoo. And as well, if you like having explosive early games and generally being the aggressor in most matchups. So moving on to our next deck, we're talking about everyone's favorite deck to hate, which is Aggro Shaman. So here's the list, one of the more competitive versions submitted to the Tempo Storm meta snapshot by Ant HS. So this version of the list is a little bit more pricey, clocking in at 3100 dust and requiring two adventures. There's definitely some budget changes we can make to the list that are gonna bring down the cost by quite a decent margin though actually. So over half of the cost in raw dust actually comes from just having Blood Mage Thalnos in the deck. And while Thalnos is probably a good choice for an optimal list, since she provides both spell damage and card draw, we can totally replace her and be just fine. Spell damage is pretty important to this version of the deck though because of Spirit Claws, so the most logical card to replace Blood Mage Thalmos with is going to be Kobold Geomancer. So of course the Kobold Geomancer is a worse card because it's not going to draw you a card. It can actually sometimes be better since it does have slightly better stats overall. Of course it's worse, but since Blood Mage is just more of an efficient card rather than a core part of the deck, it's not going to hurt you too much and it brings the cost down to 1500 dust. Unfortunately though, the only epic in the deck, Doomhammer, is really necessary though, so we can't really replace it. And the adventure cards are a little bit irreplaceable as well, seeing how Tunnel Trog is just a super insane one drop, and the rest of the deck is pretty much built to enable Spirit Claws and Maelstrom Portal with all the spell power minions. But 1500 dust and two adventures isn't really all that expensive for what is essentially, actually the best deck in the game at the time of making this video. As for whether or not Aggro Shaman might be for you, well, it's gonna be a great option for you if you care about winning more than anything else really because this is probably the most competitive budget deck in our video that we're taking a look at. Also if you like going face, you like being the aggressor, you like smorking it up, this is going to be the deck for you. And also if you kind of like to think about assembling lethal maybe like a couple turns in advance and are maybe good at deciding whether to use your burn spells and weapon charges on minions or to throw them at your opponent's face instead. Moving on to our next deck list, we're talking about Raging Worgen OTK Warrior, which is kind of like a combo deck. And here's the Tempest Storm meta snapshot deck list from Just Saiyan of the most competitive version. So this version, the most competitive version, actually comes in at just 1600 dust and only needs one adventure. There's really not too much we can do about budgeting this deck a little bit more though, since combo decks kind of require all of their pieces to work in the first place, and most of the cards in this list are already pretty important to the deck. But there are some changes you can make Make if you absolutely need to. So Emperor Thorson allows you to combo for tons of damage in one turn, and as well Faceless Manipulator lets you kind of double the damage you're dealing with your charged up worgen. But if you can't afford the Black Rock Mountain Adventure, or perhaps the 400 dust for the Faceless Manipulator, you can put in just another worgen, and perhaps another copy of charge. This is going to be pretty significantly worse in most cases, but it's still going to allow you to pull off your combos and kill your opponents, you just have to do it over two turns with two buffed worgens. Now that version of the deck is going to 
going to be way cheaper coming out at just a little bit over 1200 dust requiring zero adventures and that version actually might give you a slight advantage in certain matchups as well since you can make a riskier play with your first worgen since you know you're going to have a backup for the combo it might be a little bit better to have the full list put together but you can still build a very competitive version of this deck without the faceless manipulator and without emperor thorson making the deck once again cost just about 1200 dust and require no adventures making it extremely cheap this would be a great option for a brand new player. It's probably one of the more fun decks to play, at least one of the more unique and interesting decks that we're taking a look at today, with the only real issue kind of being like the difficulty of playing in terms of combo decks. So I would recommend playing this Worgen deck if you're the kind of player who likes playing like a really long sort of controlling game that's drawn out, planning to survive for like many turns, as well if you maybe like drawing lots of cards and then just killing your opponent with a huge play from your hand, or if you maybe think of Hearthstone as more of like a game of chess and prefer like combo play over minion oriented combat. And for our next deck in the video, it's going to be Hybrid Hunter. So here's Jab's list from the Temple Storm meta snapshot once again, giving us the most competitive and of course most expensive version of the deck. So this is going to be the most expensive of the decks that we're taking a look at in this video without a legendary, so it's clocking in at 1800 dust and needing all three adventures. So unfortunately Karazhan is pretty important to the list since Barnes and Kindly Grandmother provide a lot of just the grindy early game value that the deck really needs, but the other two adventures are actually a lot Lot easier to replace overall. So Huge Toad's a great 2-drop, but we can really just put in King's Alec or maybe Knife Juggler for it instead, since they can be fine in certain situations and most of the time it's not really going to be all that bad, and of course it means you don't need to unlock League of Explorers anymore with this deck. Quick Shots may be a little bit harder to replace though since Hunter doesn't have as many effects like it, but some of the 2-drops we mentioned previously, or perhaps another copy of Freezing or Explosive Trap, generally helps fill out the deck quite nicely and removes the need for Black Rock Mountain while still keeping the deck reasonably competitive. Unfortunately though, there's not too much we can do to reduce the dust cost of this deck since it's pretty much all contained in the two copies of Call of the Wild and the Savannah High Mains, which are kind of the best cards in the deck overall, and there just aren't really that many good replacements for some of the rares as well. Overall though, 1800 dust and one adventure isn't really that high of a price to pay for a competitive deck that you can get to legend though, and so for those of you trying to see if the hunter deck might be a good option for you, it's going to be a great choice if you are the type of player who likes the flexibility of maybe an aggressive or a mid-range, kind of like a curve intensive playstyle where you're always trying to be mana efficient and all that sorts of stuff. Or maybe if you like getting huge value out of your minions and really just grinding out the board control a little bit slowly while also always having aggressive options. Or if you kind of just like casting Call of the Wild, which is one of the best cards in the game, or if you maybe just love animals. Overall though, those are some pretty brief overviews of the budget decks as well as the non-budget versions of our budget decks that could definitely get you to legend. So what deck would you play? Definitely let us know in the comments below and looks like that's gonna be it for me. If you enjoyed the video, drop a like, subscribe if you want. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.